meal prep is extremely important if you want to stay consistent and do something for your future self. you got to do stuff for your future self if you want to be successful. So this is the number one thing I do is meal prep. Hey, welcome to my channel where I've lost 175 pounds with keto and carnivore. Thank you for watching. Good morning, y'all. It is 6 o'clock. I woke up at 5.30, but uh, yeah, good morning. Um, I'm going to do a bunch of different meal prep today. And it's early, so I can't think. <laughs> I haven't really drank any of my... I actually decided to make tea this morning. You can see it right there. I had some two tea bags and poured some boiling hot tea on it, so I haven't been able to sip on it yet. But uh, anyway, so this morning what we're going to do is brown beef and chicken. I need some more rice chicken. So that's what this is going to be. You know me, i got to make sure I remember to low, low, low. All right. So all my crock pots are set on low. I'm going to pour in some water because I use, I use the liquid leftover for broth. Um, so you don't need as much water as I put in. Um, may not even need any for the 73%. But again, I use it for broth for my dogs. So I will not season this. I do not season my meat while it's in the crock pot. Um, Unless it's something like a roast or something, then I season it. But since this is going to be broth for the dogs, I just add water and it's going to go. Every hour, I'll come in and use this and kind of just chop up the meat just to kind of break it up so it's not one big meatloaf. So it's not one big crock pot meatloaf. Um, I do use plastic liners. Sometimes I can get away without, with them not breaking up or cracking, you know, tearing. Sometimes they do tear, it just kind of varies. So, um, so in essence, I am boiling my meat in the crock pot, but I'm okay with that. So, I'll dump the rest of that in there. There we go. Um, when I come back and use the meat, like this ground chicken, like for what I'm going to make later today, uh, you'll notice that I put it back in the skillet because I let the skillet kind of dry it out a little bit. Like when I use it for riced chicken, um, I, I dry it out a little bit in the skillet. So because it does get so waterlogged, uh, but it's okay. It's not hurting anything. So, uh, and, you know, it works for mass, for mass production okay we said low for mass production i need things to be big uh, a lot and then that way i can uh have it ready for the week now if i were just doing one meal every day i wouldn't yes i would i would probably do this too because it's so fast it's so or so easy you just stick it in the crock pot and walk away and when it comes to ground beef, that's a wonderful thing to be able to just walk away from it. Because if you cook in this skillet, you got to stir it up and stir it up. I put this in here and I come in every one hour and chop it up. So I'm gonna just kind of breaking this up a little bit right now. And then, uh, all right, we'll come back in an hour. I think my, I think my Alexa heard me say something. And she set a timer when she wasn't supposed to. Now, I'm not going to judge her. You know, she does She does a good job all the other times. So, I'm not going to fuss at her. But I think it hasn't quite been an hour. But, that's alright. So, I'm going to go in and I'm going to chop this up. I'm doing the chicken first. And then, I'll go over to the ground meats. Oh, the ground beets. It's beef. It's a dribbling. Yeah, it hadn't done much over here. This thing, yeah, it's warm. It just hadn't done anything yet. So, all right, well, there's one. Let's do this here one. Nope, 
It, so, by the way, it was still frozen in the center of the, it was one of those big fat 10 pounders. So, it was still frozen in the center. So, you know what? I think I'm going to kick these up to high. Hey, Ziggy, set crock pot timer one hour. Crock pot timer one hour. Now, now. now we know it's the right one. So, all right. I've got these going. These two are on high. That one's on low. And, uh. I'll meet you back here in an hour. Today's Saturday and laundry day. And I, look, he just sits there and he waits for me to come walk up the steps and kiss him. He says, pay the toll, lady. For you young people who don't know what a toll is, in the olden days, certain parts, and I think even some, some do now, but I know in the 70s and 80s, certain parts of the interstates and highways, you have to pay a toll that's how the city makes taxes money. I don't know, we don't have any around my area, but when I lived in Illinois, they had a, a pass and you bought this thing and they, you put it in your windshield of your car. And when you drive under it, it would, it would recognize your, your little pass and it would take money out of your account. But anyway, so this boy is saying, you gotta pay the toll. And that toll is one kiss. He's impatient. Okay, okay, we're coming. Look at this boy. He said, oh, pay the toll lady. Pay the toll lady. <makes noise> yep, all right, let's go. I'm having to do laundry because, ay, ay, ay. <clears throat> somebody went to the yard and stepped in some dog doo-doo and they stepped in dog do, and then they went and stepped on my uh, on my bed. So I definitely had to yank that off and go wash that. So, bleh. but anyway, at least I get told me in kisses. So I'll put up with it. Okay, next thing. Hey, look, I took your advice, and I'm putting my tea bags in a jar. That looks a lot nicer than my uh, than my little plastic container. So <clears throat> what we're doing back there is. I mean, you know, I watch that Chef Jean-Pierre, and he makes, he uses clarified butter. Well, I had a whole bunch of butter that I was not using. And so I'm like, it's all, I mean, it's all in the freezer. But since I do mass cooking, I don't, I don't use a lot of butter. So I'm like, well, it's just sitting there in the freezer. Let me just pull it out. So he has a video where he makes clarified butter. So that is what I am trying to make. He used a, uh, he brought it to a boil, and uh, which I've just covered it now just for a minute to kind of help you heat it up faster. But he brought his butter to a boil, and then he pours it into a glass thing, and then he scoops off the top pieces, like the, uh, the protein, I think he's, it's like the leftover water and mix of water and protein. And um, so he scooped that off and then he pours it through a, a sieve and um, a colander and then um, and after it's done boiling. So anyway, I'm like, you know, I could use clarified butter because he uses that. You can use that for really, really hot stuff. So I got to bring it to a boil 10, 15 minutes until the... Um, until all the bubbling, the frothing kind of starts clearing out. He said that's when you know that um, a lot of that lick the water has worked its way out. So anyway, so that's what I'm doing over here. No, I, I don't want this to be a super long video. So I, but I, so I am going to show you. I pulled out my baking press. And I've got the skillet that it can fit in. So I've got, I've got two pieces of bacon here. And, uh, hang on now. This is a cast iron bacon. It's a Lodge one. I got it from Lodge. And, uh, you just put your bacon in it. In your skillet. Get it kind of lined up. And you just plop your, your cast iron or your bacon press right on top of it. And what it does, it cooks the bacon faster. And um, and I'll, I'll I'll show you. So I'm gonna leave it covered for a few minutes, and I'll come back and show you. I don't remember if I told y'all, but I'm trying tea this morning, 
And um, I put some electrolytes in it. I actually made up some unflavored ones um, just real quick this morning. And uh, put that in here. And it's 7 o'clock and I'm hungry. So that is going to be a difference without the protein powder. But I'm home. You know, I've been watching videos about food and planning what I'm going to make. So, you know, through the week, I'll be actually getting ready for work. And, you know, your body adjusts to stuff. So we'll see how it goes. Sometimes you have to move your little baking press around if it doesn't cover the whole thing. You know, like if you got a pan full. But anyway, so, yeah, I'm sipping on my tea. So one thing Chef Pierre says is you want to go in and stir every now and then. Um, I think what that does is kind of brings the, the liquid up. So based on what I understood what he was saying is that butter burns at a lower point because there's the water in it. And so he said what you're wanting to do is pull out the, the moisture and the, uh, you know, the liquid from the milk. And so um, I think going in and stirring it ever so often is also what pulls the, uh, kind of mixes up that, the moisture. So anyway, so that's going. Let's see how this is looking. Yeah, I'm satisfied with that bacon. Look how flat it is. That, that's the benefit of a bacon press. I forget about this thing sometimes. Well, all the time, obviously. I didn't have it last week. I forgot all about it. When I used to mass produce bacon, um, I used to have two skillets going, and I think I have another bacon press somewhere around here. But, um, but what this does is see how this is starting to kind of kink up a little bit, starting to kind of bubble up, keeps those ends flat, and keeps you from having those, those little curled up ends. Although some people really like those curled up ends. But uh, anyway, I'll be back when it's done. So now I'll just pull this little bacon press off. I set it on this paper plate. And uh, I had to flip it in between there because this side's getting just how I like it. And then what I did back here, there was some foam on top of this. And... Uh, on the, at the beginning of his video, he talks about pulling the foam off, but I never saw him do it in the video. But I was also playing a game on my phone, so I might have missed it. <laughs> but anyway, so I did pull off some of the extra foam on the top, and I put it down in there. So I'm like, well, bacon's only going to make my eggs, or butter, butter froth is only going to make my eggs and bacon taste better. So, hey. All right, so I'm going to pull my bacon out of here and just... Plop it down in the bottom of this. And then we're going to do our eggs. So I'm having three eggs today. Turn this down just a little bit. Let me get my salt and pepper here. All right. Got some ground black pepper. Hey, is anybody else's Alexa acting weird today? I uh, I called, told her to play my regular K Love station, and um, there's some. Oh, that was ground white pepper, which is fine, but boy, that was a lot of it. Oh boy, that may not taste very good, but. That's all right. It's all right. We just keep going forward. We just keep moving forward. We're going to eat it anyway. Here's some salt. Uh, anyway, I asked her to play Caleb, and she played Caleb in Spanish. Now, you know, I know about four words of Spanish, but not enough to sing a song. But anyway, so I'm just wondering if anybody else's Alexa is acting weird. And then I told her to play a different radio station, and... Finally, she did, but I don't know. It's just she's acting like she doesn't have any sense. And I'm not sure what her malfunction is. So, anyway, just checking if anybody. It's today Saturday, so did your Alexa act weird today? All right, I'm going to let these. I'm going to cover them for about a minute or so. And then I'll be right back. 
Today is the first day of the month. On the first day of the month, I do my heart guard. Which one is this? It's um, it's the Advantage Multi. Put all these on my dogs on the first day of the month. That way I always remember it. I'm not going to lie. I usually don't in January, February, and March. I usually don't for three months out of the year. But we're back to these warm months and where I live, the mosquitoes are rough. And we really have a high... Um, a high count of, of the heartworms in our area for our dogs. So, um, so this is very important in my area. Um, oh, two of the dogs, when I got them, had heartworms. One was at the Humane Society, and he, they knew it, so they were treating him. So that was one. Um, my girl, Callie, when I got her, she had heartworms. Um, I don't know if Lou had them or not because he had been living at the vet for four months before I got him. And Baxter, they got him as a puppy, so he didn't really have a chance to to uh, have that. So anyway, yeah. So month first of the month, don't forget, heartworm medicine. Spend about a minute on these eggs. I'm still trying to master this, this method. So I poured this. It's probably about a tablespoon of water in there with them. And I'm going to cover them for about a minute and then in theory they will be over easy without ever having to flip them and break your yolk and the milk or the butter I, I set a timer for, for timer for about 15 minutes so uh, it's got about three minutes left on that I'm just going in and stirring um, what I've noticed in the past like whenever I've gotten some water in back whenever I was, I'm, I'm out of it now, but when I was using my tallow, I noticed that when there was water in it, it, um, it kind of sizzled a lot. So that's what it's doing right now with this butter. It's sizzling a lot as it's uh, boiling, but in theory, you're boiling out the water. So just keep on stirring it every now and then and, uh, and work that work that uh, water out of there. So, let's see. Ooh, they look pretty. Once I get in here, I'll break the yolk and we'll see if I did it. We'll see if Terry did it. Right. Let's get a close up and see if I did it. Hey, yay, looky there. That's probably over medium. Um, we're over medium, I've went to restaurants because you know, since I typically don't order the, the sunny side up, um, that's what that looks like over medium. It's a little bit runny, but not runny, runny. So, all right, that's my breakfast this morning. And I'll get back to the, I'll show you me pouring out the butter in a few minutes. By the way, the butter and the eggs and the bacon. Who Nelly, is that delicioso. Mmm, mmm, mmm. So it's funny, as I'm stirring it, you know, I I had about three minutes left on my timer. There's uh, more froth coming to the top. And um, I'm going to scoop this off. <clears throat> it's got good flavor, so I don't want to, you know, just like throw it away. So, um, I mean, it's, it's butter broth. Butter froth, you know what I'm saying? So... <clears throat> That could be used for other things, I'm quite sure. Could use that in, I don't know, whatever I'm making today. That's quite a bit of froth. I need a bigger ladle, but this is what I'm grab, so. I don't want it to burn. So I am gonna turn it off now. Cause it's been boiling quite a while. 
but I'm just going to work on scooping this froth off the top. I switched to a ladle, bigger ladles, to uh, to get more at a time because it's taking a while. I'm gonna make sure I stir that bottom too to make sure I get it all off the bottom. Ow. This is very hot, so uh, don't burn yourself like I just did. Up it all. If I pour that back in. Nope, I don't want that brown stuff on the bottom. All right. I got a lot of it out. Now I'll get just this little bitty light stuff off the top again. Like I said, I don't know. He didn't show quite all of this part, so I'm just kind of winging it. And it might automatically separate. when Because he said then you let it cool for an hour to an hour and a half. So I'm just going to include this in my, in my ground beef video. We're gonna, we're just gonna pour it into here and let it sit off to the side to cool. Hope I don't make a big mess. So I just pour it all into here. I'm gonna save this brown. I bet that's that brown butter that people talk about in there. He was a lot of that uh, ketogenic woman and. Uh, I know a lot of them people right now are doing brown butter stuff, but I'm not looking to add more fat to my life, so anyway, so I'll put that in there and see it. Now we're going to let this sit for about an hour to an hour and a half or two hours, however long it takes to cool down and start separating like he talked about. Okay, we're going into hour two, I'm just coming in and chopping up my chicken. I just kind of go in and make sure I pull it away from the edges. Make sure there's no chunks that are stuck together as it's cooking. To be honest, the leaner meat is worse about sticking than the fatty meat. So like the 93% ground beef, um, I definitely always had to add water. For the fattier meat, if I didn't need a broth, I probably would not add but maybe a cup of water, if that. But um, since I use it for the broth, for the doggies, I, I definitely add water. Okay. My butter is just sitting over here behaving. It's just sitting there. It's, I set my timer on my crock pot for, I think, I think it was two hours. Hey Ziggy, how long is my butter timer? You have three timers. Laundry with about four minutes and 40 seconds left. Crock pot with about 58 minutes left. And butter with about one hour and 36 minutes left. So I get, it's got an hour and 36 minutes. So I'm assuming that I set it for two hours. 
It's just sitting over here, just behaving. I may have cooked it too long. It's a little bit dark. It's a little bit dark. It's going to be like that brown butter folks talk about. But, meh, it's all right. I'm not going to worry about it. wonder how it tastes. Tastes good to me. So, I'll be using that. But, but we'll, we'll wait till it finishes cooling down. And then we'll do what we got to do from there. Okay. See you in a little while with these. So I feel like the green, the ground chicken is done. Um, it's been a while. The texture's good. So um, now what I'm going to do is usually I scoop it out into containers, but this I've been putting in Ziploc bags. So I'm going to. I need the broth for something that I'm making in a little bit. So, hold on. So I'm gonna put the, the ground chicken into this little dish, but I'm gonna put something on it to see if I, mm, that's not gonna work. Oh. Hang on, one. I'm fighting. Okay, my Alexa was arguing with me. The ground beef I need to chop up, and then I'll come back to it in another hour. Um, I just set, had to set a timer and stuff. So anyway, so I want to kind of chop that up a little bit. Then when I get this done, then I'll get my chicken. a way to keep this clean i know i know i got an idea Hold i don't know what costs more um these little bags these cooking bags or running a load of in the dishwasher running a load of clothes or uh, running a load of dishes in the dishwasher i got a load of clothes in the laundry so i've got myself discombobulated but um so for now I'll just put the chicken in here and I'm going to let it cool before I put it off into Ziploc bags. It won't take that long, but right now in this, in the crock pot, it's hot and I want that juice out of there because we're going to be making something with that, with the, uh, the chicken broth. I used to use, well, I, up until a couple weeks ago, I used the chicken broth with the dogs, but I've got an allergy dog, and one of the first things, the most common allergies that dogs have is chicken or pork. I don't know if that's his case or not, but um, just in case, might as well not give it to him if I can avoid it, especially if I can use it for something else. Now, that's all I'm going to get to scoop out of here. I need this broth put into something. Let's see, did I mess up? Nope, I didn't, didn't mess that up yet. So I need something for the broth. I need something big. Like, uh, something like this. Slide that out of the way. And I need my... My uh, thingy. And then I'm going to pull out my ladle. I use this ladle with the butter. Ladle with the butter. So it's not going to. Doesn't have anything wrong in it. All right, let's, all right. Let's get some things adjusted. Let's move the chicken over to the. Stove top. Just for, for some space. 
Nah, nah, nah. Now, what I can do in a second is I'll be able to just pull this baggie right out and use the baggie, but it might be a little too heavy right now with just all with all that broth in there. So I'm trying to strain some of it out first. And then I will pick it up and dump it in. Also, I'll put this chicken over into that dealy. So let me put this chicken over into the dealy. It's awful cloudy. I'm not sure what the deal was with it, but it's cloudy. Maybe some of that ground. Oh, it put that ground chicken out. Of, it was the cheapy kind, so I bet you it was pretty fatty. All right. Oh, gotta do it. Wow, I'm burning my fingers. Oh, dude. Dude. I'm making a mess. There we go. All right. I'm gonna add this chicken over to my that other chicken. I don't know which is gonna be less messy. Um, I'll do this. All right, now I'm gonna set the strainer over here. And there is gonna be our chicken broth for the other stuff I need. So I'm really just gonna set this back here out of the way. I'm gonna give this a little, little soap, not a lot, but then this is clean because I had that baggie in there, so this won't have to be washed in the dishwasher. So I'm going to rinse that out. All right, I found one of those, that little pan that I tried to use last weekend. And I'm going to set this in the refrigerator because it might be in a couple hours before I'm ready to use this broth. And I don't want it to get bad before I can use it. And then we're going to work on this butter that we made. Okay, so now we're going to take a spoon. And what Chef Jean-Pierre did was pull this excess little foam off the top. I, I grabbed a dirty dish, this, this mug that I use my breakfast in, and I'm just going to gather what's on the top and put it into here. I should have grabbed what I have in the refrigerator, but that would make too much sense because, you know, that stuff I already pulled off and saved. That would make too much sense for me to do that, so not always known for making the most amount of sense, you know. There we go. Now, now, now what he did was he poured it through a cheesecloth and sieve. So let me go grab a cheesecloth. I think I have one. Hang on. Okay. Not perfect, but it'll work. So he said you pour slowly and he said that the cheesecloth catches most of it but he said when you get to the bottom you will notice that there is the the change in what you're pouring and i see what he's talking about and i'm going to show you when i get there i need to stop right about there now see that that's what's in the bottom now mine got hot so I, I'm not gonna say it burned but it browned my butter browned so instead of instead of um, uh, clarified brother butter I probably have ghee but that's all right they both work exactly the same something that he had mentioned was that when, the longer you cook it, then it gets more of a nutty flavor, which is fine. I don't care. So um, that's what this is going to be. So what I need to do is just sit and let this cool, and then I'll put the lid on it. I'm going to pour this back into here, and I'm going to put this, just a second. I'm going to put that down in here, which is the, which is the, Pro, the, so, the solid protein from uh, from what I made earlier. That's all the things that I pulled out. So this would be the browned butter bits, which is fine. You know, we don't want to waste stuff. So what I'll be doing is I can use this in stuff that's already cooked. 
and that'll just be browned butter and I can add that to stuff. I just don't want to waste it. And then this, after this cools down, um, then this will be my clarified butter and I can use this instead of oil and stuff because now it should be good at high temps and should not burn at a high temperature. We will see. This is just an experiment. I've never made it before. So I'm just going to let it, I probably, I'm going to try to put it in the refrigerator if I can, but it's awfully close to the top. So I, yeah, I'll try to get in the refrigerator and then we'll take a look at it later or, you know, as I cook over the next several weeks. So now I'm just going to make a little, a little tape thing, and just a label and it'll just be, I'll just call it brown butter. So I know that it's not the stuff that can get really hot, but it's something that I can add to foods to get flavor. So that's my brown butter. And then later on when I go in the refrigerator, I won't be, what in the heck is that gross looking stuff? <laughs> I'll already know. All right, there's that part. So my chicken has cooled down. I'm curious about how much a cup of chicken weighs so we're going to find out because a lot of times you know it'll say a cup of rice and so i'm curious just i know i'm darting up a dish to find out for science um a little about six ounces i usually do it in seven ounce servings so uh I'm gonna stick with my seven ounces, but I was just curious what it was. And I keep this uh, this paper plate on here because if it gets, you know, if, if I make a mess, then it keeps my thing clean. Although it's dadgum expensive as paper plates are nowadays. So then when I'm done making up these, I will have, I'll have on my thing, I put them in one big one, so I don't label everyone. I just say rice, CHX, seven ounces. So then, that's how beautiful my handwriting is. But uh, so then I don't. I, then I know things will be double zipped in my freezer, and I don't have to label every single bag. So I'm gonna keep on going with these until I get seven ounce. All these done up. And I'll see how many three, three pounds of chicken makes. I'll do another one for you. Doesn't look like it's gonna make very many. I don't know if you can hear the music in the background. I was playing Witcher, the video game on my PlayStation. I was playing Witcher and um, I'll forget it. That thing's getting on my nerves. Nope, nope, nope. Don't be, don't be baby Terry. Um, I was playing Witcher, and when you push pause, you get this background music. So I don't know if y'all can hear it in the background. I don't know if I'll get in trouble for it or not, but uh, for copyright infringements or whatever. But um, it's a game I've been playing since 20, gosh, I think 20... 17, no, 20, I don't know, 18, 2017, somewhere in there. And um, I play that one and then a few other uh, video games on my PlayStation. I like the open world ones where you get to make choices and stuff. I play Witcher 3 and I play um, Horizon. I play Forbidden West and Zero Dawn. And um, I've played a few others, but those are like the one. Oh, 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 oh. Red Dead Redemption. I played a few others, but I just always come back to those three. I think because they're such a good story and you kind of fall in love with the characters and, you know, you, I don't know. It's just what I, I enjoy those kind of games and I haven't, they haven't had any other new ones. The Horizon Forbidden West just came out last year. So um, I played it through only twice. But um, I think Horizon Zero Dawn and Witcher, I've both played through both of them about seven, seven, eight times. But um, 
it's something that I can play and not really have to do a lot of thinking. Sometimes, you know, you got a lot of thinking that happens during your day when you work and you come home and you just don't want to have to think and you don't want to have to talk to people. And, you know, I, I've tried playing the online game and I didn't like that. Um, um, I used to play some online phone games and I really enjoyed those. But unfortunately, with my personality, I got caught up in <clears throat> in the buying aspect. Um, you can spend hundred dollars here, and you can be bigger, better, brighter, faster. And I would get caught up in that, and um, so that was not good, not good for my pocketbook. But um, anyway, now, hmm, there's not enough room in my in my container for this. Right here. Let me see. I don't necessarily want to dirty up something else up. Well, I'll put it back in. What to do, what to do. I'm in a quandary. I don't even know how much it is. It's probably not even an ounce. I've got a couple critters down beneath me. That's what I'll do. I'm just going to dump it on the floor and they can lick it up. Well, there's, yeah. The broth, I can, there's just a little bit of broth. I could put that into the, um, I could put that into the thing. So, all right, so that's my chicken. <clears throat> I'm going to close this up, and there's my rice chicken. So I can use this as I need to. I can use it as I see fit. And I'll put toss this in the freezer. Now we're going to do our ground beef portion. Um. These are all the beef broths that I bought because I wasn't sure when I was going to do this next. And this is the reason why I do this. I do the meat like I do because I put brief beef broth on my dog's food. So I'm going to turn off my timers or my the crock pots. I'll turn them off and I do the ground beef. I looked and it looks like I do them at about eight ounces is what I've been doing so I'm gonna do eight ounces so that way every time I pull out any of this is how I do my meal prep if you're new every time I pull out any of my main meals I know they're somewhere between 600 and 650 ish calories so whatever I choose to add to this whether I choose to add a salad or whether I add this to something else I will know that this is like I think this one's 680 calories so I will know that this ground beef is whether I use 73 percent whether I use 80 20 93 percent I always make it for around the same amount of calories so then that way the only thing in my world that changes is what side I use so since I'm going to be making up some uh uh, spaghetti squash later I could pour this over it and add a little marinara and have spaghetti so um, yeah this will always be the same actually I don't put my lid on yet I let it I fill them up and then let them cool and then I put the lid on so I'm gonna do these and I'll see how many we get with 10 pounds of ground beef also I don't label these because I, when I pull it out and I open it up it's obvious that it's not chili or that it's not anything like ground chicken because I do the ground chicken differently or um, or it's not a cabbage something or another because I look and it's just ground beef so um, I just I don't label this the plain stuff because now if you can but for me it doesn't matter I open it up and it's beef and I'm like okay it doesn't matter whether it's 93 73 I know I'm gonna eat it and whatever I'm decide to do to it I know that the main calories is the same as how whatever you know else is in that refrigerator so I just grab stuff and pull it out and defrost it and when I go to eat it I'm like okay well that's what I'm having today it makes it a nice fun surprise so when I open that I know that that's meat and it's not something anything other than just meat and also since I don't season it I can use this meat any way I want to I can use it for Italian, I can use it for uh, Mexican, I can use it for, um, um, like I could do it on a, on a pizza, I could do it on, 
gosh, I could do, I could add some ketchup and, and cheese to it and make it more like a burger. So by not seasoning this at all, it is just, it's a clean slate for me to figure out what I want to do with it. So, okay, now I think I'm done yammering. So now I'm done with the scooping out the beef on in this one. So now what I'm doing is I'm collecting broth for the dogs. And again, remember this is no seasoning, so um, I filled about that full, and then I add water to top it off. So this poor this poor poor kitchen camera is so full. Um, but anyway, so I'm just going to keep filling these up with about two scoops worth of the broth. And then, uh, and then I'll top them off with water. And then I put these back in the freezer. You can see that much of it is fat. And so when I, def when I unfreeze it and get ready to use it, I pop that off. Because um, it's froze that little piece of solid, the fat. I pop that off and, and um, pour get a little extra water down in it then. So, all right, I make a bunch of broth. And I'll show you at the end of this how much ground beef and broth I have. Here's what I do with those little fat caps whenever I pull them out of the freezer. I just drop them into here and uh, and then I melt them down and uh, I make it into kind of like a little treat for the dogs. They don't get them very often because, you know, big boy needs to... That's another bit of them. These are in the freezer. But... Um, I have to watch, you know, big boy don't need a lot of excess stuff. But um, anyway, so I do that and then they get little little fat bite, little fat treats of beef fat. So, you know, they're not sad about that. So here's this one. Look at that. It's all nice and clean. All I'm going to do is I'm still going to run a little soapy water in it. But now I don't have to try to make room in my dishwasher. A little bit of broth dripped down in there. But again, I'm going to run soapy water in it. So I don't have to run this through the dishwasher and take up space. So for those of you who fuss at me about my plastic, I'm not stopping. Okay, bye. All right, let's look at the fruit of our labor. I'm going to count these. I didn't count them while ago. So I see one, two, three, four, five, six. I think there's about six or seven. Let me just count them so we know for accuracy. I'm a little OCD that way. I can't help it. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so we have six seven ounce servings of ground chicken. So again, we'll use these for as our riced chicken. So whenever we do something that we want over rice, we'll just pull one of these out of the freezer. So we got six of these. So whatever six times seven is, that's how many ounces of chicken we got. Then we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 eight ounce servings of the 73%. Hold on. Ziggy, what's eight times 15? Oh, wait, I guess it don't matter. Because I don't know how many. Hold on, hold on. Okay, Ziggy, what is 10 times 16? Ziggy, what's 10 times 16? 10 times 16 is 160. Okay, that's what I thought. So 160, it started as 160 uh, ounces. Ziggy, what's well, 8 times 15? 8 times 15 is 120. So we lost 40 ounces of meat. There we go, that's interesting. No, yeah, we lost 40, is that right? 160 minus 120, 40. So we lost 40 ounces of meat whenever, well, listen, I did that in one of my old videos. I don't know which one it was. I did the meat and I did like the different, uh, the different, uh, you know, the fat percentages of them and I compared them. I don't know where that video is. It might be in one of my meal prep videos. I couldn't tell you. But in the end, this was the cheaper. This and ground turkey were about the same. But I think in the end, this was the cheapest. So that's why I still use 73%. So we got 15 servings of eight ounces. And now we'll move over and I'll show you about the broth. So these are the broths that I got. Now, I know I got more broth because I added a lot of water. But uh, so I'm gonna let these cool. 
And then, like I said, I'll put them in the freezer and then I'll pull them out. <coughs> and these will be what I pour over the dog's food. Because you know, some ground beef broth is going to be a heck of a lot better than just plain old dry kibble. And they love it. So, um, anyway, you see this tail right here? I'm over here by the food, so he's hoping that maybe something's about to happen. Anyway, so I'll, I'll water them down a little bit more whenever they're done, you know, after they defrost and stuff. So, that is that meal prep. Let's take a look at our clarified butter. So I just pulled out of the refrigerator. You can see it's starting to kind of congeal a little bit, which is fine. You know, it's, that's what ghee does when I, because I store my ghee in the refrigerator. Um, so let's just taste it. Yep, it tastes like ghee. So, all right, I'm gonna, I think that's cool enough that I can put a lid on it. I'm worried I'll forget, because you know it's me. I'll get all into something else and forget about it. So I'm going to put the lid on it, and then you'll be seeing me use this as the time goes on when I cook. So I'm going to put all the lids on all my stuff and get it put in the freezer. And this is the carnivore meat portion of my meal prep today. As I'm putting these legs on, let me tell you something. You have to do some type of meal prep. You can't just willy-nilly hope that you're going to hit your macros and hope that you're getting enough protein and hope that you're getting enough um, carbs and whatever. You can't just willy-nilly do it. And the one thing, I've told you all over and over, the one thing that I've been consistent with the whole time whether I was carnivore, keto, ketovore, counting calories, counting whatever. The one thing I've been consistent with the whole time has been meal prep. You have to do some type of meal prep. You don't have to do the, the fancy fun meals that I've been doing lately. And we, if you look back in my videos, you know I never did all these things that I'm doing now. I just did the meat every weekend and half the time I'd throw in some frozen vegetables and I would eat those right along with it with some kind of sauces. But if you want to stay consistent, if you want to be faithful in your journey, this is the one guarantee that when you get home from work, you've got food available to eat. So <clears throat> right now, I've, I, this is two weeks worth of meals. No, no, no. This is one week of Lunch, supper, lunch, supper, lunch, supper, lunch, supper, lunch, supper, lunch, supper, lunch, supper. So I have lunches and suppers for enough for a week and a day. So <clears throat> this is why I do this. So whenever I get home, I can make up a salad, grab a rutabaga, grab whatever I'm going to grab. And that is, that, that's what I do. So meal prep is extremely important if you want to stay consistent and do something for your future self. You gotta do stuff for your future self if you want to be successful. So this is the number one thing I do is meal prep. 